then of course I wanted to mention the interview itself. Um, so Playboy Carti had a very, very, very rare interview with Double XL, kind of out of the blue, really. It didn't really make any sense why this came out now. I'm guessing maybe because he's kind of ramping up for the new album, which he kind of mentions. But the tour has come to an end. Um, he's still kind of, you know, kind of sitting and marinating in the success of Whole Lotta Red. Uh, there's maybe a couple of features out. You know, the Kanye West feature has obviously done pretty well for him. But there's not really been else that's been going on. Maybe, of course, the performances at Donda he did. But it's been kind of quiet on the Playboy Carti front. So it's, it was a bit of a random story to kind of push out there. But again, maybe there is an album or something coming up that we're not really attuned to because Playboy Carti does he intend to kind of just drop out the blue whenever he's kind of ready. Um, let's talk about some of the things that he spoke about that I, I also really like. Da, 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 da. Yeah, so this is probably interesting. Tim talking about Tech Nine. I thought this was really good as well about the juggalo. He says, um, music so is about Tech Nine, of course. Uh people in hip hop uh used to not embrace not to you want to not embrace tech as much as they do now. So you saying that it this is a surprise. And he says the following about Tech Nine, right? I just like how he's consistent. I like his vision. He stuck to his own vision. People like him are before their time. You know what I'm saying? He's a genius and I'm a genius, so that's how I see it. This might be indicative or a bit of an insight into Carti's direction going forward because I think Whole Lot of Red was actually the reset. I think he was actually done with that sound that kind of made him who he was in terms of that. Because I, I would say Whole Lot of Red was his magnus, magnus opus, right? That was the way to kind of encapsulate that kind of time period, that kind of um, break, the merging of the bridge, right? Was it the connecting of the bridge? The connecting of like the, no, the connecting basically SoundCloud rap and commercial side of things or the swag rap, wherever it may be, right? And he was able to kind of present it in this most truest, purest form. But maybe what we didn't, what we missed was that Whole Lot of Red was never meant to be, because I think when Whole Lot of Red was announced or kind of teased, it came quite soon after Die Lit. So I think naturally people like myself thought, okay, Whole Lot of Red is going to be Die Lit 2, right? An extension of that sound. But actually, when you consider the aesthetic that he's kind of gone into with, his, with Whole Lot of Red, the kind of what gay vampire thing he's got going on, when you think about the sound of the album, the influences of the album, the merch of the album, it's all very much away from whatever he was doing on Die Lit. It's all very much punk um, influence. There's a lot of, you'd maybe say, electro stuff in it. It's, it's just, it just goes on a completely different tangent. So if that's the case, it would make lead me to believe that he maybe he is going in a Tech Nine, tech nine way of things where he's basically resetting the room. You know how some DJs do the thing where, not sure if you're aware, but some DJs will do this thing where they're playing a set and imagine they're coming after a person who maybe is playing loads of bangers and they want to play what they want to play. They don't, they don't want to come and just play another banger after, after the fact. They might start their set with like what's called a, a like a clearing a room track. A track to kind of reset the room, let people go to the toilet, let people order their drink, let people get set to dinner and realize, okay, cool, it's another person playing. And then they start playing what they want to play, not kind of carry on what that person played before. So maybe this was meant to be it. Whole lot of it was a palate cleanser. Maybe that's the case. It continues, it says... So you're kind of like a 2.0, 3.0 version of that kind of movement. Not the music, but the overall package. He says, I'm more like, I'm more like, sorry, I'm more like, I'm a real life artist. I really studied this shit before I got into it. Tech Nine is the pioneer of this shit. Rock stars. He embraced the rock star punk shit in hip hop and it's fire. So definitely, uh, in, but definitely uh, something to keep in mind in terms of his direction when he's going into music going forward. There's a great picture of, of Playboy Carti there on a cover of um, Double XL. It says the following do you look at your fan base as a cult following do you feed into that he says it's just a world i was telling my friends i'm into tattoos right now it's a but it's a bunch of people that take tattoos seriously just like they dedicate themselves to that you got rock stars punks you got emos you got goths with me i'm just like being myself i feel like i'm I, it's a lot of people who really want to be themselves and do a lot of different things that's the reason why it's cult because everybody's not going to understand and i understand when they see me especially when i was coming up they are like oh damn carl just looks like me a regular atlanta nigga you know what i'm saying like boom boom tall dreads tall and dreads and all that and i definitely understand and i definitely get that from him especially the first bit you do get the feeling that he is quite he is quite all in so when he's inspired by something at that particular time he just dip deep start uh, kind of 
uh, dives deep into it. So it wouldn't surprise me if for the run-up of Whole Lot of Red, he was listening to a lot of hardcore. He was listening to a lot of punk records, maybe a lot of metal stuff. And that kind of influenced what he was obviously putting out and the aesthetic he was kind of going for. And over time, it just kind of continued. Do you know what I mean? And I completely understand that and get that for sure. Um, we continue on again here. Take away back freshman 2017. No, 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 no. I want to actually talk about the bit that I like the most, the bit about music, actually. Let's see if I can get that on here. Bear me one second. Kind of load. Come on, you mug. Oh, come on. There we go. Ugh. Yeah, a bit about face pain. They call him Michael Jackson. Okay, come on. Yeah, this computer's getting on my nerves, mate. The slowness is mad. Uh, oh, yeah, this is it. I like this bit as well about him being standoffish. It says here. You seem elusive, quiet, standoffish. Are those things that you are by nature? Would you agree with that? You don't do many interviews. You're on the quiet side. Is that intentional or just naturally who you are? He says, sometimes I feel like I don't know how to talk. So I don't want to be, I don't want people to judge me based on how I talk. You know what I'm saying? I was never like that. Even when I got around my white friends and shit, I'm like, what up, shorty? You know what I mean? I don't switch it up. I'm just a product of my environment. I'm from Atlanta. And I love Atlanta. This is me. Certain things you can't change. I get my teeth done. I can get a skincare routine. I can go dress up nice, but I can't take that Atlanta out of me. You know what I think? I think there's a lot of cap. I think what happened to him was what happened to a lot of artists is he was fortunate enough that his talent and his music was so good people didn't care what he had to say so he could get away with not talking to people i think frank ocean realized that quite quickly too because if you don't want to talk to people anyway and your music is so good it allows you not to talk to people you don't need to do it look at kendrick he hasn't we haven't heard him speak in years right and that's basically what it came down to and obviously over time it's become a bit of a marketing thing a brand thing but i don't necessarily think he's he's always been standoffish but there's definitely an element of him that i feel like similar with tyler the creator in terms of being a bit outside the industry right he, he kind of always feels like they, they get counted out you always feel like tyler's always got a bit of a chip on his shoulder where people are like sunning him or even the ongoing beef he has with flipping um with dj khaled where khaled says that no one's listening to that in real life and shit he's like no they are listening to it because my stadiums are full i'm doing arena tours i'm selling out these places da, 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 da. I'm, I'm winning grammys clearly it's resonated with some people maybe not you but some people definitely like this shit Maybe the same thing goes for Clay Carty. He's got to a point now where, like, you know, it's hard now to become the friendly, I'm going to be around everybody guy because you've never been around. So just continuing on this thing, maybe buys into it. And also for me personally, I think his music is far more interesting because he doesn't spend a lot of time with artists. He's not chasing singles. The fact that he hangs around with regular people or, you know, little design kids or scene kids, it makes me believe, especially some of the kids I see him hanging around with on Instagram, they're for sure playing interesting shit on their, on their phones, when they're in their cars, they're just throwing each other links and shit. That's definitely informing his kind of artistic expression. So it's no surprise that he and let's say somebody like a Louis Vert, guys that you would say are actually um outside with the people, it's no surprise they make the most interesting music really because they're with the people and they have normal friends and shit and they go and do normal things. So they hear stuff, they see stuff, and it all inspires their work. I'm pretty sure that happens as well. Um I, I don't even doubt it. And then um the the, the bit that I the, 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 oh yeah, this is the one, yeah. About a new album. You play some new music. One song was called Wicked. You mentioned on a new you had a new album. What can you say about it? He says, I was about to name my album Music because that's where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? Music. Which again, I think leading back to Tech Nine, leading back to Whole Lot of Bird being the palate cleanser, maybe this is the again the next step up the palate cleanser you palate cleanse you tell people okay cool i'm never gonna make a dial it 2.0 i could do that with my eyes closed i remember i think the weekend did it with Kissland. i think when he put that album out everyone was like oh that's shit it's not good but he was basically saying i could do the hits like the house of balloon stuff in my sleep that's easy but what i'm doing on this pop end trying to make these like big records that resonate with people all around the world who speak all different types of languages that's really difficult to do that's much more difficult to do than what he's doing at house of balloons and he always of course has perfected that to the point now we get dawn fm which is i think you know and again a flipping classic when it comes to the, like, the weekend catalog so maybe this is that same thing whole lot red was a palette cleanser and then what comes after it will be a far more refined and in tuned laser focused version of what he actually wants to do going forward as an artist i can definitely see that um next on the list here we had uh, no continue music because there's a point um 
It says here, yeah, walk through the differences between three albums you released. They all seem drastically different from each other. How do you describe the growth between the projects? Are you offended by the baby voice? He says, hmm, I don't know. I don't judge. I don't get mad at my fans for saying baby voice. That's how it is. That's how it's described. He said, yeah. Then there's then then it's that. Like I said, it's music. That's what I'm uh, that's what that's what that's what it's for everybody just no that's what it's for so everybody can just i got a lot of people that got to take care of so i'm here forever so the music that i'm making is forever i've been listening to mayhem the weekend a lot of old atlanta shit ratchet, ratchet shit do you think sometimes i need to dumb it down do you think i'm too ahead maybe because because sometimes i feel like dumbing it down makes more money of course but him being a bit more avant-garde i'd say forward thinking definitely has propelled him to be at the point where he's, where he's got this cult fan base and i think if he just carries on with this he'll be completely fine he says are you making it for the money he says no he continues um when, when does it matter why would it why would you dumb it down he says people talk i just like to have a lot of people i have to take care of i just you see that a lot often isn't it? take care of take care of maybe see it more as a job obligation I don't know, interesting thing he keeps saying that it continues here it says and if you do dumb shit down to get the money i'll do that for my family you know what i'm saying i'm just letting people know i know that's going on and this is what i'm on you feel me i'd rather do it now people love it people hate it and then two years from now it's normal being weird is normal now you know what i'm saying um if you're not weird you're not cool so maybe he's saying he's trying to give his fans a heads up like hey I know you like all the shit I'm doing and I'm obviously catering to the fan base. I'm giving you weird shit. I'm challenging you. I'm pushing the envelope and whatnot. And, you know, I'm basically reminding you why I'm your favourite artist every album that I drop, which I think has happened to me often. But he's also telling them, or us fans, hey, be, a, be mindful. When I decide to sell out and kind of cash a check to feed my family, don't judge me. It is what it is. I've got to feed my family. That kind of thing, innit? Like, don't be too harsh on me. Um... It continues here. Oh, he said he, the interesting voice they said here about his voice. Supposedly, it says that it was a deeper voice on this snippets for his new album. This one's coming out. Um, he says, What are the topics? Love, sex, and rock, rock and roll. Uh, I love the bit where he says here at the end, towards this. He says, The question is, What are the topics that are important for this project? What did you notice while making recent music that you would find yourself rapping about and writing about? He says, Love, sex, drugs, changes in my life. I've been rapping about going to rehab, which is interesting because I think a lot of fans have been basically saying that he needs to kind of lay off the lean, the perks and whatnot, but it is what it is. Rockstar life. He says, I want to go to rehab because I want to, I think I'm bipolar, so not even the drugs. I want everybody to feel free. I want this album to make everyone feel free. I hope this album brings peace to the world, honestly. I'm in love with what I'm doing. Like I told you, you can't put a general alternative on me. My little brother told me that all the time. So I love the fact that he's kind of pushing away from the genre. And I think that's always like a journalist thing. I don't think fans give a shit. When you're listening to an artist, fair enough, you know, you listen to Playboy Carti at the beginning because he happened to be a hip-hop artist or he's hip-hop adjacent. But once you start becoming a fan of him, whatever he puts out, doesn't matter where the sound goes, you're going to still listen to it. Unless it's maybe... I don't know, like a West Side Gun or that, those typical rapper rapper kind of guys. Maybe if they decided to make a disco track, it might throw you off. But if you're a fan of them, you should be willing to give them a chance to try anything. And as long as it's presented in their in their kind of way, you would you should like it, innit? That's what you think about it. Um he says I'm a hip hop artist, the uh, people is telling me I don't go by the rules. Uh what else about it? Not this one. Let's continue on. Was Kanye. oh yeah cool. of course the Kanye thing is true as well um it says Kanye is his brother was can't describe how much his family to him and then oh yeah this is the one let's go to this one I think uh where is it is it dated let's see I think that was when everyone was flipping throwing their arms out in the air about uh where is it I think it's there in it where, where it says here yeah this is the one this question here so there's a question here on the on the interview it says the following um yeah so how do you respond to the face paint um his family i'm assuming it says they laugh but they know my friends call me michael jackson they're like you're on your michael jackson shit cool but then the interesting question says the following here it says did you have to grow into a place to be comfortable with that side of you the face pain and that kind of expression he says i wouldn't give a fuck because it's like i love everybody i don't judge nobody i have gay friends i have trans friends you know what i'm saying i done dated dot 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 so do you think this was a revelation that he put in there that he might have dated guys before, trans people before, people that will identify as trans, whatever it may be called. Maybe. But I also think 
does it bloody matter? Really, does it matter? Because I think if you're a fan of Playboy Carti, you would have clearly seen a difference in his aesthetic, a difference in the way he kind of carries himself, the things that he's talking about in his music, and it could lead you to the possibility of thinking he might be into dudes, right? Or it could be thinking he might be bisexual. But it doesn't necessarily matter to me when it comes to the art. I've never really cared about it. And I think going back to the Andy Warhol thing, that was a reminder for me because as good as that documentary is on Netflix now at the moment, it's got some weird thing, technology they use where they basically were able to kind of... Um, get Andy Warhol's voice in an AI machine and have it read aloud his um diaries the diaries of I think it's the diaries yeah of um, Andy Warhol which I've got the book of it's a kind of diary entries that someone published in the book and um they basically it reads it in his kind of voice which is flipping really spooky you can kind of notice it's kind of robotic at the beginning but once you start watching the episodes I think there's three or four of them you start to get used to it but in that documentary, they put a real big onus on trying to uncover or unravel um, Andy Warhol's sexuality and how he wanted to present himself and that stuff. And I just don't think it's necessary. I think it's really, really abhorrent, really, if, if I'm being completely honest, because it kind of takes away from what that person was put on this earth to do, um, make art. Yes, the sexuality and relationships may influence the art, but the art is what matters. The art, the art, the art. Even the family life isn't really that important. It might inform you. It might be an aha moment when you figure, oh yeah, he came from an abusive family. That's why his paintings are like this. Cool. But for the most part, it's about the art because Andy Warhol is a good example. Playboy Kai may be a good example. They already live enough of a action-packed, fruitful, drama-filled life themselves right just being a person uh, existing as an artist you don't even need to dig into a relationship it's already enough to talk about do you know what i mean it doesn't necessarily matter so i look at this and i'm like and if anything as well part of me also thinks it's very weird that you have it feels like there's a real big it feels like media have a desire to i won't say out but to be there when somebody wants to maybe come out of the closet or to maybe ask the artist or the creative whatever it may be to clarify their sexuality or their relationship status or what they think about family or marriage there's a real big kind of fervent a fervent fervent whatever like frothing of the mouth to kind of uncover that like let me be the first to say oh wow look this person's this you admitted on our paper but if we're being honest and we're living in a forward thinking society where LGBTQ plus people are able to kind of live free and do as they please in terms of moving around in the, in the world and getting married and having unions and raising families, we've kind of really progressed a lot in the last, it feels like 10 to 20 years. If that's the case, and we now get to a point where people are identifying as different sexes or genders and they're not even doing it the conventional way in terms of, oh, I'm trans. It's like, no, I'm trans. I'm, I, I feel like I'm, some days I'm male presenting, I'm female presenting, I'm no, but whatever it may be. And everyone's kind of, even though it's confusing, people are willing and able to have time and patience to kind of understand their point of view. If that's the case, really and truly, the real form, I think, of expressing it and of living your truth, no, so expressing it is basically living your truth living in the world and just dating who you want to date because you're attracted to them without putting a label on it is actually where we want to get to we want to get to a point where no one gives a crap that you're gay no one gives a crap that you're queer that you're lesbian that you're whatever it's just whoever you love you love and people celebrate that that is it so the fact that he doesn't even want to put a label on it or it doesn't even even thinks about is a step in the right direction i feel like the younger generation kind of a lot a lot like that they don't necessarily maybe they put the labels i feel like to maybe describe themselves to the boomers so that they can kind of maybe put a bit of distance or maybe give them a heads up and be like hey by the way this is who i am or maybe just to kind of annoy them i don't know what it is but for, for the most part i don't think the younger generation actually are like you know banging on about their pronouns to their group of friends because their group of friends know they're not banging on a, or, you know for them to uh, uh, no one in a group of friends looks at them weirdly if they happen to kiss a boy and a girl in the same night at like a at like a club or something no one cares you know what i mean it, it feels like only the media the kind of old establishment mainstream media are still kind of hell bent on uncovering and revealing someone's sexuality it's like who gives a crap man like leave the person alone but anyway what do i know in it what do i know but yeah that's the topic i wanted to end on there um so uh please check out the interview it's really really informative really really interesting 
I feel like Playboy Carter is one of the more interesting artists that we have, especially now with this newer generation. And he's definitely kind of offers up some interesting proposals when it comes to hip hop music and how he basically sounds and the way he makes his voice into an instrument and the hooks and the whatever. Everything's really cool to dig into with him. He's very Marmite ish in the same in the same way all great artists are. Either you get it or you don't. And if you don't, I totally get it. But I definitely do think he's one of the best artists to come out of that kind of crop of like youngsters from his kind of, of generation and it's good to hear him say he's making music he's on the way to making a new album too i'm definitely definitely looking forward to that i'm not gonna lie